What's up guys, it's Adam with RC Logger and today we are going to do a demonstrational video on how to swap out the main flight controller for the RCI-1 Extreme. Um, we're going to start off with a fresh flight control board. This is what it's going to look like when you receive it. And obviously your Extreme Quad. Uh, for tools, um, I've got the RC Logger bit set driver set. It's a real nice set. It's relatively inexpensive. I think it's like $20 or $25. You can check it out at RC Lot rclogger.com and I am done with my shameless plug. All right, I'm gonna try to make this informational and fun for you. I've seen so many videos on the internet where it just makes you wanna pull your hair out because people bore you to death and I'm going to do my best to not do that. So for starters, we're going to remove the uh, main cover. Take note on the foam pad. The foam pad inside the main cover protects the um, barometric sensor. Uh, it's a light sensitive sensor so we use the pad to uh, cover up the sensor and that makes it work better. For starters, we're going to make an indication of our wiring and I've already done that. So basically I drew my quadcopter and I drew my front facing arrow, arrow indicating which way is forward. And then I indicated the um, colors of the uh, wires from each motor. So I have black, red, and white. And then over here I have white, red, and black. And on the bottom, I just did the same thing. So uh, when I pull my flight controller out and put my new one in, I can connect my wires exactly the way they came. And I know I will get the correct rotation of my propellers. It's a nice little cheat. Um, use it. All right, let's go ahead and take the uh, old flight controller out. For starters, what we're going to do is uh, back off these set screws right here. And I'm just going to turn them three or four turns each one just to give some room so I can pull the old wires out. This part is already taking way too darn long, right? All right, so let's see. The next thing I'm gonna do, uh, another tool I forgot to mention that would be worthwhile having is a pair of tweezers. All right, so I've got all my set screws backed out. Now I'm just gonna take my wires and remove them from the connector. Just kind of move them out of the way a little bit. Obviously make sure you don't have a battery plugged in at this point in time. And if you do, you probably shouldn't be doing this in the first place because it's not safe. So, pull my wires away. And the next thing I need to do is move on to dropping the battery tray. The battery tray itself is mounted to the flight control board. So I'm gonna switch my bit out here. There's a total of eight screws on this flight control board. The smaller of four screws is the are the screws that hold the battery tray in. They are the closest in on the flight control board. So one, two, three, let's see, make sure I got it. Three right here and four. Now four is the little bugger. Four is hidden underneath this three pin uh, connector and that's the PWM connector. I'm gonna show you how to do that in a second. So I'm gonna start with the easiest of the three screws. And this helps if you do not have sausage fingers like I do. So there's one, save them. There's a little washer on there too. You're gonna to wanna to reuse it. It's a very small washer. There's two, three, And the fourth one is the bugger that's hiding. So you're gonna kind of get in there at a little bit of an angle like this. Let's see, make sure it's in frame. Yep, a little bit of angle. And slowly turn on that bad boy until it pops out. You'll know you have it because the battery tray will come loose. So grab all them screws out of there because we're gonna need them for our new flight controller. And then we're gonna move on to the four screws that hold the flight control on uh, the mainframe itself. Now, there are uh, suspension washers, little rubber um, grommets, if you will, standoffs, that uh, 
are implemented to provide vibration isolation for the main flight controller. This makes your RCI Extreme fly better. So it's very important that you do not lose any of these isolators. Um, there are four on the top and four on the bottom. So one of the things I like to do is kind of set it down on a flat surface. And I just take my time and this is what one will look like. Uh, can we get some 1080p up in here? Not going to happen, is it? Maybe something like right in there. Okay, so it's got a little rubber washer on it, basically. Let's take these four screws out. And now I'm going to show you that you should not just rip your board off of your unit because it is still somewhat connected. There are orientation LEDs that are connected to the main flight control board. Uh, in order to remove them, what I do is I start at the front and I just pop that guy up and out. I don't hope you saw that. And then I'm going to move off to the side. Let's make sure we get this in frame. And I'm just going to pop that too. So there's just two little prongs right there. And then move over to this side and pull that up. All right. Now, uh, it's important that I keep my orientation correct. Um, however, you can't put this board in. I guess you could put it in backwards, but uh, one of the ways that you could identify that you're putting it in the right way is the battery jack uh, will go into the uh, battery jack receiving slot in the mainframe. So, old flight controller, you're going to remove this and put it off to the side so you don't accidentally reinstall it thinking you're putting a new one in. So then we're going to move on to reinstalling the flight controller. And the first thing I'm gonna make sure of is that my little rubber grommets on the bottom side of my frame are in place. And one of them was a little loose, so I put it in place and I'm good to go. Now the next thing I'm going to do is reinstall my uh, flight controller, my new replacement flight controller. And this is a little tricky, it takes a little patience. Uh, I'm gonna start off with just the same way I left off, which is reinstalling the orientation LEDs. And it takes a little bit of uh, patience to get them lined up. There's one, move over to the front. Now the trick is to be careful you don't jar loose the um, rubber grommets that support the mainframe or the uh, flight controller uh, to the mainframe. So you wanna make sure that you aren't bumping them loose and then once you get your, your uh, LEDs lined up, you'll just slightly seat the board. Let's make sure I'm in everywhere. Oops, one of them came off. So this just takes a little patience, a little time. And there we go. All are seated. Clear my wires out of the way. Now if you've done it correctly, in this case I I have, woohoo, good for me. If you've done it correctly, you're gonna notice that the rubber grommets are um, basically ready to receive the screws. So I'm going to basically take my screws with my grommets and reinstall them onto the proper hole. These are the outside, foremost outside holes. Now look, you don't have to crank these screws down tight. Just snug them up. If you crank it down too tight, you're going to basically defeat the purpose of the grommet itself, which is to vib which is to isolate vibrations. So um, you just basically want to just seat the screw. Don't overdo it. Three or four turns, something like that. Just make sure it's not too loose. Make sure it's not too tight. Okay, then we'll move back onto the battery tray. We're going to line it up. Um, it's omnidirectional. It doesn't matter which way the tray faces. It will mount either way. So I'm going to put the tray in, and I'm just going to look for the screws to line up. The uh, holes themselves, they're kind of set, so it'll, you'll actually almost, um, it'll seat into place. It won't snap into place, but it will seat into place. And then I'm going to install my screws for it. Run all four of those in. I'm gonna do the three easiest screws first. That way I know the tray itself is lined up. And seat them as well. Okay, cool. 
Now the last screw is a little tricky because you got to kind of take it in at an angle. I have sausage fingers, so if you have smaller fingers than I do, it's going to be easier for you. And you just want to get it started and carefully run the last screw in. Uh, basically after that, you're going to switch your bits out and attach your motor wires in the correct orientation. Refer to the chart that you made initially. Uh, this is where the tweezers come in handy. Um, and I'm going to just do a couple of these and then end this video for the sake of it not taking forever. So you're going to realign your wires with the hole. There's a small hole at the bottom of the connector and hold it into place and set the screw. Now you'll know you have set it properly if you give this wire a tug and it does not come out. You're going to repeat that step in the color coordination that you've already documented all the way around and that will complete the flight controlling uh, flight, flight controller swap for the RCI1 Extreme. Uh, hopefully that wasn't too painful. Hi there guys, I just want to make a real quick clarification to the flight control replacement video I posted for the RCI-1 Extreme. Uh, to clarify, I actually made a mistake um, when I was uh, giving directions for the canopy placement. Um, the foam block, to clarify here, the foam block, which is right here, is actually going to cover this very small sensor in the back. So please disregard the previous statement that I made. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to cover this particular sensor here with the foam block. This is the proper way to reinstall your canopy. Thank you.